How's it going everyone? Oh, welcome to the very first weekly roundup of season two uh and big news well my name is only hermit first of all i'm going to be your regular host here and i am going to be joined regularly every week by my brand new co-host sorry landon we love you still uh <laughs> timmy it's really timmy b i should say his full name not just the, the small part it's really timmy b uh thankfully someone else stepped in because landon wanted to focus more on the ebl uh so how are you doing my friend we are glad to have you here well, first off i gotta give the people a sup sup everyone it's really timmy b but i am doing <laughs> great excited to be your co-host and excited to to see some amazing pokemon battles uh amongst a lot of our friends in the community i'm super pumped too <laughs> so everyone in the comments say hi timmy of course uh hello timmy welcome him in, welcome into the ebl family uh he's a great addition um and of course while you're down there you may as well go to the description check out all the other coaches that are involved in the league our links are down there of course but the links to all the other coaches are down below that's the best way to keep up with the matches best way to support the league is to support all the coaches um and yeah so this is our preseason roundup if you guys remember last season we did this uh so essentially the quick rundown is that we're just going to be going through all the teams giving our initial thoughts we're going to start with the mega division go to the dynamax division um and just go through all the teams give our thoughts we're not quite gonna do season predictions because honestly it's just too unpredictable right now uh with half of the league we've never even seen them battle so it's just too hard to try and predict uh i feel like we're just we're gonna be guaranteed to be wrong by the end of the season <laughs> so we're just gonna go over the teams and then we'll give you guys our week one predictions as per usual um i am going in order of the teams the way they're listed in our discord there's no particular order don't get mad at me i'm just i'm just <laughs> listing them how they're here okay uh so like i said we're gonna start with the mega division uh and first up we do have inferno men we miss you buddy um <laughs> coach of the uh iowa incineroar his team is uh of course started with incineroar then uh vanillix halucha alolan raichu polyrath quagsar scissor guzzlord and Tapu Lele, a very interesting team, all shinies, so I'll give him points for that. Um, but a very interesting team. I, uh, on initial, initially seeing it and it's a uh, full fruition, I guess. Uh, the team looks weird. I've, there's some mods on there that I've never really seen used competitively, uh, so I'm very curious to see how how Landon's going to use them. Uh, there, it's just a different team. I think I think that could be said for the next team as well, which we'll get to. But this is a very different team. It's a nice mix of good typings. Uh, it's it's odd. like I said on initial initial look. Like, I'm not quite sure what he's gonna do with this team. Um, what what are, what are some of your initial thoughts, Timmy, looking at this team? Yeah, no, great question. And when I was going through this, I was uh, uh, of course in the discourse. I was paying attention to the draft and his first couple of picks of Incineroar, Vanillax, Alucha, Lolan, Raichu. These are some of Landon's favorite Pokemon. So. To me, it seemed like he just wanted to get some of his favorite Pokemon on the team before he was worrying about strategy, but then he picked it up mm -hmm. later in his draft with Quagsire and Polyrath and Scizor. Scizor and Polyrath, generally pretty quick Pokemon, so Scizor will be a nice sweeper. Quagsire can take a couple of hits. Also, Water Ground, great typing. And then Guzzlord and oh, Tapu yeah. Lele. It's going to be exciting to see, so I'm glad we got some of his favorite Pokemon on his team that he can use as well as getting some good bonds late in the draft so i'm definitely excited to see what he's going to bring to the table all these pokemon are shiny they are great shinies and uh yeah i i, I know i know a little little secret for for week one so that's a little preview for everybody i i know something that uh landon told me that i have to keep my mouth shut on buddy so can't tell you can't <laughs> tell you <ya. laughs> uh well that makes me even more excited to see his first matchup um but yeah, with Landon's team, again, I think it's just the air of mystery around what exactly he's going to do. Um, I just on paper, I don't know how strongly this team will match up against everyone else he's got. Uh, it's a little hard to see. So I, I don't know. I, it, it's pretty clear Landon. He's, he's mentioned he does kind of he picked his team for a reason. So I'm going to trust that he has a plan. Um, with his team so he might struggle maybe just just maybe just pure power from a lot of the other pokemon in the league might be too much 
I think that might be a big problem for his team is if he goes against just a, a team like like Derek's, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, just a powerhouse team might be a little too much. We'll see though. I, I, like I said, I trust him. Seems like he's got a good plan going on. He clearly picked them for a reason. Uh, so I'm going to trust him with that one. Uh, now moving on to Jack Nishin, the coach of the New Brunswick Ninetales. Again, another team that is quite diverse, but also interesting. Um, but I, I think, honestly, I like a lot of these picks um, that he chose, like Zekrom. I love the Tangro, uh, hate Shadow Haze B. I uh, <laughs> love the Dust Noir. Love the Snorlax. Of course, he had to bring that back because of the cage lock he had with, uh, with Derek. Um, but Cryogonal is actually one that I'm surprised to see. But honestly, I think it's, I think it genuinely could be a huge part of his team. Um, I personally have felt the sting of a very strong Cryogonal before. Uh, it hurt me really bad. <laughs> but I know what Cryogonal is capable of, and I have a feeling that it's going to be a big part of his team. Uh, not to mention, he's got like quite a bit of bulk in there. Uh, would you agree? Would you agree with that, Timmy? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Looking at his team, it's entirely bulk. I mean, Bronzong, Tangro, Dustnor, and then even Snorlax, Arcanine, very bulky yeah. Pokemon. So Jack's going to be able to take some hits. Now, I do agree with you that I was a little shocked that he went Crag and all uh, in, his, in the first round. And while everybody was kind of picking legendaries or maybe their channel mascot that we just were talking about with Infernament taking Incineroar. So I think mm. that just adds to my excitement to see what exactly Jack has planned for Cryagnol, taking him so early in the draft. I think he definitely could have waited to take Cryagnol. So that just adds to my excitement to see how it's going to yeah. be used. But yeah, you nailed it. That that was my my word for, for Jack's team is bulk, bulk, bulk. He's going to take some hits. He's going to set set up uh, uh, quite a bit as well. And he also has some hard hitters. I mean, Snorlax can take some hits. He can also mm -hmm. give some hits. Arcanine can give some hits as well. And of course, Tangrowth, Haze B, just a thick boy. <laughs> Biggest. <laughs> uh, I think that was probably my biggest surprise with Krogonal was that he took it first round. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, I actually didn't really think about it that way. It does make it obviously he felt that it was that important that he had to take it first round. Uh, it doesn't compare to Shelko going first round yeah. last season, <laughs> but but it's still very interesting. And like you said, I think he probably could have waited. Like I don't think anyone else is gonna take Krogonal, but clearly he felt it was that important that he had to take it. So. Uh, I am very, very interested to see Cryogonal above all else. Weirdly enough, with a team that has Zekrom and Snorlax and all these other Pokemon, I'm, I'm most excited to see the Cryogonal, <laughs> the Snowflake. Um, but Jack's team, I feel like could definitely do some damage. Um, I don't think it's as bad. Uh, he's going to have as bad of an issue with, as uh, Foos did last season. Foos' team last season was very bulky, but unfortunately, he just didn't quite have the oomph on the attack. Um, I think Jack's team has a much better balance um, and will definitely be able to put up some big numbers. I think coming into this season, uh, I think he, I think he'll, he'll, he'll be one of those teams that can keep the matches close. Like even if he loses, I feel like, I feel like he can keep the matches close. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I think he's gonna keep the matches close. I think one thing uh, we gotta, we gotta um, just get into, and that's why we're not gonna be making any predictions. Is we don't know. Jack's battle strategy. We don't yeah. know Landon's battle strategy, so that's why it's so hard for us to make predictions. But with this bulk on his team, he's going to be in every single match. And you just said it as well, my friend. He might lose. He might be losing quite a bit. But hey, I'd rather lose and take out almost half his team than, than get swept. So I think he's going to hang around in matches. And uh, hope, I think if he can get on the other side of you know some of these hits and everything like that, I think Jack will do fine. But uh, close matches for sure. Mm -hmm. for sure uh now moving on to my team <laughs> um the la inferno uh the roster consists of tyranitar lander sapaldon rotom heat draco vish corviknight swampert mamoswine and leafeon um i'm gonna let you take away on this one and then i'll just like build off of you because it's i don't want to be like all over it i have plans and i'm not really trying to spoil them um so i'll let you i'll let you take over for my team yeah you like uh you like a ground pokemon it, it seems like or uh, or some rocks as well i mean <laughs> tyranitar lander is a pound on swampert mammal swine over half your team consists of the ground type not a bad type does have a couple of weaknesses though and they are some heavy hitters so i'm excited i mean tyranitar is gonna pack a punch swampert the best gen 3 starter out there uh it, it's gonna be great and then at the end, Leapion. Leapion is such a good physical attacker, especially with grass type moves, which is nice, especially after the, the Gen 4 split when they brought in Leapion, of course, some physical grass moves. That's going to be fun to watch the Leapion. 
And then Brodom Heat's gonna be nice. Corphonite's always good. Can and it's gonna be interesting to see how you use Corphonite, because Corphonite could easily just set your team up with light screens and reflects and, and all that stuff. But it can also attack as well. So I'm interesting to see how you use this Corphonite. Uh, but yeah, you gotta watch out. You got a, a lot of uh, common weaknesses amongst your team. Yeah, I tried covering them to the best of my ability, but I do agree. Uh, I mean, it was always gonna be obvious. Whenever you run a, a, a weather team, there's always a, a glaring weakness. Right, um, right. Like last season we saw with Crobats' team, it was freeze dry. <laughs> that tore his team apart like three times. Sheesh. So yeah, uh, definitely want to be careful there. Um, I do agree though, I, I have some heavy hitters and then, then I think, uh, I mentioned in my preseason interview, if, I, if I'm able to, to, to use the team correctly, <laughs> then I, I, I definitely think I could possibly pull off some wins, we'll see. Um, but um, if, do you have anything else to say? Because <laughs> I was just gonna move on. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, just personal preference. I, I love, I love Swampert. I love Mamo Swine. So uh, definitely, it's toward the top of my power rankings by just having some Pokemon that I generally like and, and would love to have at any point when I do a Nuzlocke run. So uh, kudos to you for for you know being up there in the power <laughs> rankings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, moving on to the penultimate coach of the Mega Division, we have Foos Rodab, the coach of the Everglade Entes. We were just talking about him. Uh, his team consists of Groudon, Torkoal, Gastrodon, Venusaur, Blacephalon, Rotom Wash, Gallade, Colossal, and Galarian Weezing. A much improved team compared to his team last season. Um, like we mentioned, it's not so much of a shield only anymore. It's definitely more balanced mm -hmm. between the sword and the shield. Uh, so unfortunately, the Great Wall of Everglade may have gotten a little bit weaker, but it's okay. It's just going to be the Wall of Everglade this season. Um, <laughs> so looking at his team, though, it's interesting because he's got Groudon Torkoal. And immediately I was thinking like, oh, this guy, he's going to try and run a drought team. Uh, and then he picked Gastron. Uh, Venusaur is not that surprising because of Chlorophyll. Uh, Blacephalon's also fire, uh, Colossal's fire. So there's some leniency with the drought, but there's also some Pokemon that not that don't necessarily fit in it. So it's not completely a drought team, but you could tell it's kind of the direction he was going, but at the same time, he was still trying to keep it balanced, which I think he did a pretty good job of. Um, and uh, just looking at the team, it's honestly it's honestly very good. You could tell he you could tell Fuse has, has a strategy up his sleeve. The guy is smart. All last season, he, he pushed everyone to the brink. Even though the one in, ignore the one and four record, if you really go back and watch those matches, he pushed everyone to the brink um, and proved that he was very much a great, great, great battler. And again, if he just had a little bit more oomph on his last team, who knows? Some of those matches could have turned out differently, but now he's got that that balance. So I'm very excited to watch Foose. I'm not going to lie. He's probably the one coach I'm definitely keeping an eye on this season. Not just because he's my week one matchup, but also, <laughs> because, also because I'm very excited to see how he's able to turn his season around. Uh, what, what are you thinking about his team here? Well, first of all, definitely excited that Billy Mays is returning with uh, the Road of Wash. Yeah. Very excited that Billy Mays is returning on Foose's team. And yeah, Groudon Torkoal, very drought heavy. And then Gastrodon, uh, which was also just nice to see in that draft strategy. Everybody's like, oh, drought team, drought team, drought team. Then you see Gastrodon, and then you just, you said it yourself as somebody who's in the league, you were kind of thrown off being like, uh, I don't know where he's going to go next. But I like that yeah. unpredictability from Foose. I love Gallade, one of my favorite Pokemon. Great attacker, great typing as well. Venusaur is going to be amazing. So he definitely has balanced out. And I think Foose and, and Derek, who we're going to be talking about next, have that advantage because they were participants in Season 1. They kind of know yeah. the deal and everything. So I think that helped with their strategy in drafting and planning the team. So definitely a well-balanced team in my eyes i think uh he can get creative too like i said he can run a drought team if he wants or with billy Mays and gastrodon and, and some other pokemon on the team he can also you know kind of get a little wet and and, and run sort yeah. of like a, a what strategy so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what he brings to the table in week one do you actually have any predictions on uh what he's gonna try to do against you or are we saving that for later uh I, we'll save that for later. We'll save that for when we get to the matches. We'll save it for when we get to the matches. Uh, I'm very curious, though, about his team. I think you can kind of see, like, if you look at who he's playing against, you can kind of see who he's probably going to bring. 
it's a little bit on the predictable kind of on the predictable side i guess but at the same time it's it's coming up with a strategy strategy to try and stop him uh he mentioned his galarian wheezing is going to be very annoying he mentioned he was trying something new with billy Mays. so uh yeah i'm very curious to see what he's gonna do uh and it sucks that i have to go against the weak one i'm gonna keep saying it because it sucks but uh definitely i'm super excited to see what foos does after week one um then you know once we play each other after that then, then i'm excited to see what he does i'm not excited to see him uh, week one yeah, but it's definitely a tough, week, <laughs> tough week one matchup for you my friend yeah yes i know i know stop reminding me <laughs> um but moving on to the final team of the mega division uh we have the kentucky kinglers uh their coach is of course always more videos or Derek, which is probably how we're gonna be referring to him this whole time um his team, man, again, Derek managed to slip away with another powerful yeah. team here. Uh, we got Salamence, Season MVP, Cinderace, Ferrothorn, uh, Mimikyu's returning, Ninjas, Primarina, Togekiss, Dialga, and Galarian Slowking. I believe seven out of nine of his Pokemon were on teams last season, which was really interesting. But uh, there's probably a reason. I'm assuming it's because, you know, or is it six? Six or seven of the Pokemon. But um, when you see how a Pokemon's used, you're probably feeling confident that you can maybe use it in a similar way or even better um so i think the biggest underline on his team is definitely the season mvp from last mm -hmm. season it has to be cinderace you have to be we have to point it out last season we did not pay enough attention to it in the preseason round of this season we have to pay attention to it it's right there uh so cinderace is definitely one that everyone's gonna have to keep an eye on but i believe other pokemon on his team like mimikyu is a powerful pokemon um, Derek used it pretty well last season. I feel like maybe he's getting a little more comfortable with it. And he's going to be able to use it even better this season. Uh, Diagra is a fantastic Pokemon as well. Fair Thorn, great lead off Pokemon. I'm very interested to see the Ninjask. I'm thinking like speed boost, swords dance type shenanigans or something along those lines. So uh, very interested to see the Ninjask. I wonder why he picked it. Um, what, how he felt, I guess, that it would, it would sync up with the team. Um, so I'm very curious about that ninjas, but Cinderace, Cinderace, Cinderace is definitely the number one there. And this is the season where we get to see, does Cinderace make the trainer, or does the trainer make Cinderace? Like, is Cinderace that good that no matter who uses it, is, is you know, it's going to kill no matter what? Or is it that you use Cinderace well? You know, it's it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, what's, uh, what are you thinking about his uh, unfortunate powerhouse team? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth talking about ninjas. I think the clear and obvious, well, really, your only option to do with the ninjas is to sword stance, speed boost, maybe protect. Hopefully you get a switch. That way you can increase that attack. Uh, but I like I like his strategy. I like Derek's strategy about the draft. He went with Salamence. He went with Cinderace. He got himself the heavy hitters that he was looking for. And then he went with very set up and annoying Pokemon with Ferrothorn, Mimikyu, and Ninjask. And then he, he returned getting some bulk as well with Togekiss, Dialga, of course, Derek the Dialga, uh, and Glarian Slowking. So he, he came back with some bulk. He got the heavy hitters and Salamence and Cinderace. And, and of, of course, Dialga, Togekiss, Primarina, they can also give some good hits as well. But he got the heavy hitters, he got the annoying setup mons, and then he got bulk. So this is a powerful team for the Kentucky Kinglers. And going into a second season, I think he's going to be a little bit more prepared. And uh, I yeah. think he might be one of the favorites to win the entire EBL, um, certainly to make it out of the Mega Division for sure. So I'm very excited about our friend Derek and the Mega Division uh, and this team. I think he is ready to party this season. Yeah, definitely. I'd be very surprised, honestly, if Derek ever fell out of the top two. Mm -hmm. um, last season, you know, for as you know, not so confident as he was last season, he never fell below third. So, yeah. I mean, he's still. I mean, yeah, he lost the first playoff <laughs> match, but still, doesn't. And regardless, he still kept up throughout the season. So, uh, I, I'd be very surprised if Derek fell below second. I think he's got, he's got the weapons. He's got exactly what he needs. He's got his arsenal. Uh, he's ready. And like you said, I, I think he's definitely more confident this season than he was last season. And is definitely one of the favorites. Um, definitely one of the favorites. So we'll have to keep an eye out for him. Um, but that was the final member of the Mega Division. Now we move on to the Dynamax Division. And we begin with the champion, the reigning champion right now, Guanaco Gaming. Um, with Feramosa, Zacian, Zacian, however you pronounce it, Dustform, <laughs> Lycanroc, Inteleon, Charizard, 
uh shako whimsicott rillaboom and the playoff mvp weavile or championship mvp i forget what it's called i always forget uh but weavile is one of the big mvps point is it's on the ebl logo for a reason um again this this no cinderace this time around but he proved in the playoffs last season that uh, he didn't need cinderace because his two playoff matches uh neither of them involved cinderace he was on the team but did not make an appearance so prove that he didn't necessarily need cinderace to win it all uh and <laughs> he's definitely gonna be one of the favorites this season i mean he has to be the reigning champ the whoever wins uh, a, a, a championship is usually amongst the favorites the next season so he definitely is up there but he's he's a great battle i mean that's above all else even if he wasn't the champion last season he'd still have to be up there um, because he did really well last season uh, got a couple of unfortunate losses but uh, during the regular season but he was able to turn it around and, and his strategies were just incredible we see a return of shuckle which was really annoying but I feel like the biggest one that people might not really be talking about too much is that Zassian because uh, it's got intrepid sword and that's an automatic plus one ability uh, so that Zassian can come in and sweep at any time uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see him utilize that because that is quite literally the sword that is the sword <laughs> uh, so intrepid sword is gonna be very interesting uh and i think zassi might dominate a lot this season uh what do you what are you thinking about his team yeah i'm a huge fan of his team obviously he was the champion of season one so we knew he was gonna deliver with a good team in season two I love the Weavile pick. I mean, he was the playoff MVP. A very fast one. Now, Glass Cannon, he can give some hits. He, he has some hits abilities. But then if he gets it, mm, Weavile, done. Mm -hmm. Smell you later. Yeah. Um, also love Shuckle. I'm curious to see about Whimsicott. Not generally a Pokemon that I have used or really have seen, uh, especially uh, in later gens. So uh, I'm excited to see Whimsicott. You said it with the Intrepid Sword. That's going to be uh, a heavy hitter. Plus, also covering three starter pokemons water fire and grass <laughs> yeah. uh, which is going to be huge so he got type coverage he got charizard on his team so that also helps with flying so either way guanaco is going to be there at the end i mean he'll at least be in the semifinals uh, unless god forbid something happens he he comes in with a different strategy each and every matchup which is yep. how good he is like he knows how to beat you he can use every pokemon one through nine on his uh roster and, and take you down so uh, i would expect another championship performance from our season one champion yeah i definitely see him being up there by the end of the season especially in his his own division um and like you said i think one of the biggest things about this league is being able to use all your pokemon mm -hmm. um and i know sometimes you can get screwed in the draft but you gotta have backups for a reason uh, being able to use all nine of your pokemon effectively with new strategies is important so I definitely am so excited to see his uh, his performance. See if he can back up his championship with another championship. Um, now moving on to the second member of the Dynamax division, we got the commissioner. We got Stone Family 64, Matty Ice. Uh, his team's looking. Uh, his team's got Kartana, Excadrill, Sandaconda, Alolan Ninetales, Frostlass, Nido King, Azumarill, Absol, which was one of the biggest surprises of the drafts, uh, and Latios. Um, and the reason I say Absol was the biggest surprise is because that is apparently Matt's uh, least favorite Pokemon. So that came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, but this team has quite a bit of power. There's a lot of attacking power here. Um, Absol can be used for good attack. Nido King. Uh, I'm not sure about Frostlass or Ninetales, but uh, Excadrill for sure. Kartana is another glass cannon. Um, it's It cannot take a hit whatsoever, but it can dish. It can definitely dish. Uh, and with Beast Boost, it really needs one kill, and then it's good to go. Uh, so Kartana is definitely going to be a big one. Excadrill is going to be another big one. I wanted Excadrill <laughs> for a reason. Um... So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see his team. It's a lot of sword, a lot of sword, not a crazy amount of bulk. Um, I would say there's definitely a lot more attacking prowess on this team. Um, Latios was an interesting pick because if you look at the, a lot of his team, it's, it's a lot of a, a lot of physical attack, whereas Latios is more is typically more special. So it's a bit of an interesting mix there where a majority of the Pokemon are physical, but only like a couple are more on the special side. Um, but Latios was an interesting legendary pickup. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's a good looking attacking team for sure. I think it's definitely going to be one that, that people need to keep an eye out for. Uh, what, what are you thinking over there? Yeah, I Wait. not surprising <laughs> that you also wanted Excadrill and I'm looking at Stone. I'm looking at Matty Ice's team. 
A lot of ground type Pokemon as well on here, so a lot of common weaknesses. Again, he has Nidoking, King, which is one of my uh, top three favorite Pokemon. Frostlass is definitely in the top ten as well for me. So definitely like his team in terms of just Pokemon that I like and some of my favorite Pokemon. And I think you nailed it too right there. Uh, he is going to be just attacking, attacking, attacking. I don't know exactly how much setting up or or defensive strategy he will be going with, which I kind of like. I'm a very aggressive Pokemon. Uh, player and battler as well. So I'm all about attack 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 I think sometimes setting up reflex or light screens or whatever to me Sometimes that's just a waste of a turn So let's keep doing damage keep doing damage and that might be his strategy going into season two Which I'm excited to see good matchup against Landon uh, in front of him, the Iowa and Cinderor in week one So we'll talk about that in a little bit the Absol is an interesting choice mainly because every time I feel like I see an Absol or I get an Absol I'm like sweet like this is an asshole and then i'm like oh wait like the stats on this are actually like not great <laughs> like i think it's a little bit better pokemon um or people perceive it to be a better pokemon than it actually is so uh, it's gonna be interesting i i love azumarill that's the bulk right there uh and slapping that on maybe huge power waterfall that could be fun we yeah. all know and the fairy typing as well on azumarill that that's always dangerous so excited to see the aggressiveness that that match going to be bringing to some of these matches and see if he just attacks 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 yeah First off, I thought you were going to say I am an aggressive Pokemon and just leave it there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Second, yeah, I also love Zerul. Uh, I have this Meryl next to me, but I love the whole line. This is Belly. Uh, she's great. She's always hanging out right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, his team's got some good coverage as well. I think that was uh, some necessary uh, coverage with some fairy typings in there. You got ice type, ghost, mm -hmm. poison, dark. You, just, you have quite a bit of diversity there. Um, so I'm very excited to see how he's able to perform this season. I think he'll be he'll be up there. He'll definitely be killing a lot of mons. I yeah. feel like he'll definitely be coming up with some big numbers there. Uh, whether that results in wins, I don't know. It's kind of an all offense strategy. Um, and you know what they say, you know, offense is the best defense. So uh, I'm very curious to see how he's going to use his team. Uh, but moving on, looking at a team that has a lot of diversity Ooh, uh, we have i we have i lone wolves team uh coach of the philadelphia flygons got xerneas celesteel celesteela if i could say it milotic blissey decidui darmanitan regular darmanitan drapion magnezone and riperior uh a very very diverse team um i think there's only like one or two repeated typings and other than that it's just just a bunch of diversity uh, i think steel is is um repeated i think is that it i think that's it uh, pretty much yeah. yeah yeah so a ton of diversity there a uh, lot of type coverage he's got quite a bit of he's, yeah he's got quite a bit of type coverage he's got his fire water grass core uh, and that's really all you need not to mention he's got bulk he's got bulk city there especially with that blissey right in the middle celesteela is a great ultra beast as well my low take also very bulky uh so a lot of bulk in there, but also a lot of power. I mean, Darmanitan is a great attacker, great physical attacker. Um, you have Decidui, who I know can, can turn up on uh, on the attacking front. Uh, Rhyperior, definitely, as well as a big attacker. So a very good balanced team. I will say he drafted really well. Uh, and I have a feeling this is going to be one of those underrated teams in the, in the league. Honestly, that maybe, maybe won't, not necessarily that it's going to be bad, but just that people are going to look at it, maybe not immediately think anything, but could potentially do like a lot of damage this season. So um, I am very impressed with how Wolf was able to draft. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on this team? Yeah. Uh, the first thing that came to mind, same thing with Jack's team, is bulk, bulk, bulk. I mean, this team is going to take a bunch of hits. And that type coverage too. Right? Almost a lot of types are covered, only one repeat. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's actually going to hurt him or help him this season because we see some of the other teams have a handful, like we were talking about Boost potentially doing a drought team. I don't know, can't do that. You, you can't do that when you have so many diverse <laughs> Pokemon. So excited to see it. I love Magnezone. I love Rhyperia going with those Gen 4 add ons uh, with the evolution line. So I'm definitely excited. I think uh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out on this Melodic. I I think not only is it bulky not only can it do attack but it can also be very annoying if they were to slap on recover and everything like that and it could take a long while to take out this melodic so that's the pokemon i'm going to be looking at for this team so i'm excited very bulky 
a, a very diverse, very, very well covered. So excited to see exactly how everything is going to be used. Because uh, as I said, he there's really no drought team or, or rain dance team or, or whatever. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how these Pokemon are going to be used. Same here. Same here. Definitely need to keep an eye out for Wolf's team. Keep an eye on the Philadelphia Flight Guns. Uh, now, moving on to our second to last team in the Dynamax division, we have uh, the Detroit Luxrays, whose coach is, of course, Gamer Views or Max. Uh, his team is Zygarde, Stack Attack, uh, Toxpex, Lapras, Aegislash, Blaziken, Lucario, Flygon, and Roserade. A, a solid team. A big upgrade on last year's team. Last year's team was. was it was like half good, half of it, maybe not so competitively viable, uh, or at least enough to keep up with a lot of the other power that was in the league. Um, but with that being said, Max still did well in a lot of his matches last season. Uh, and yet now he's got a better team. Now he's got a better team. And so I'm, I, I think he can honestly do a lot of work this season. Um, not to mention, you know, he's got stack attack, a great setup mod. I mean, a great setup mod. Uh, of course, it's an Ultra Beast as well. So if it gets, if it manages to get a kill, that's like a plus one defense, I believe, on its Beast Boost, uh, or depending on how it's built and all that. But more than like, it's gonna be defense. So it's already bulky, but then it gets even bulkier. So that's definitely gonna be quite literally a wall. It is a wall for a reason. It can stand in your way, definitely. Uh, we saw Toxpex last season be really annoying with the Miami Dragonites. So we're seeing it return again. Lapras as well is nice and bulky. Can definitely take some hits and dish quite a bit. Uh, Blaziken, speed boost Blaziken, gonna be really fun to watch. Uh, Lucario as well as a great hitter. Uh, both of them can't really take too many hits, so they're definitely gonna be the ones that just come in, probably finish off the match, get like a couple, two or three kills to finish it off. Um, I could definitely see that happening. Rosarid is probably just gonna be one of those annoying spore mods, uh, and could, I mean, could possibly be an attacker as well, but I have a feeling he might be using it more as like a spore mod, an annoying sort of setup mod like that. Uh, but this team is very interesting. It's got a nice interesting balance between it in terms of just not just typings But also just strategies different ways you can use all of them uh, Whether you want to set up whether you want to bulk whether you want to attack He's got quite a bit of diversity when it comes to that. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see Max's performance this season uh, What are your thoughts on his team? Yeah, I, the flag on pick was actually really interesting to me taking Zygarde who is already a ground dragon trying getting another one with flag on that was a little bit interesting uh, uh, for me personally, just because the, the quad weakness to ice and you already have one, so why, why get yourself another one? But Flygon is still a good Pokemon. Blaziken with Speed Boost, Lucario, those are fast sweepers. They're going to take out your team. Lapras, Toxpex, Aegislash, they're just going to stall you out. They're going to take a couple of hits. They're going to be annoying. And then Max is going to bring in Blaziken and Lucario for the final couple of punches. Needed to take out the Pokemon. And then, of course, Zygarde and Stackata, or however you pronounce it, sure, whatever. <laughs> um, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be exciting to see his team. Uh, I think it's definitely gonna be a, a much better season two for our friend Game Reviews than season one for sure. Really like his team, really like his attackers, really like his defensive uh, and annoying Pokemon generally. And uh, yeah, and then there's Roserade. Who knows what, how, how he'll, he'll be using Roserade, uh, but that's why we play the matches and that's why we uh, watch them. <laughs> mm -hmm, definitely. I think I'm gonna keep an eye on that Roserade because I'm of all the Pokemon on that list, I'm. Rose Raider and Flygon, you brought up a really good point that I didn't even think about uh, the, the double ground dragon. Um, so there must be a reason for Flygon. Uh, I would assume he took it. He had to have taken it for a reason, even though he already had a ground dragon. Um, unless he got sniped and he just, I don't know, how to pick something else. That's also an option. But those two, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on his team. Um, now moving on to probably the most interesting team in the league, to say the least. Uh, the final member of the Dynamax division. Uh, Ace Ray or Forsaken Ace, the coach of the Redwood Meowth. Meowths. Uh, he's got Ho Oh, Buzzwell, Serena, Amungus, Cantonian Meowth, which is one of the weirdest picks in this draft, period, in the Elite Battle League. Uh, Tentacruel, Dracozolt, Walrein, and Cramorant. And uh, just looking at his team, I mean, the, the one that stands out the most is his, his team's mascot, uh, they, that Cantonian Meowth. That i like i had no idea why he took that i'm i'm curious though because obviously meowth has a gigantamax form uh, and i know it can be annoying i know it can be really annoying um so i'm i'm curious to see if he's just gonna build a team that just annoys the other side because you also look up a bit there there's a manamungus which has spore which is 100 percent accuracy sleep move 
So definitely, definitely gonna be a really annoying team to go against. Uh, not to mention, I mean, he's got Wall Rain, which is a fantastic water water ice type. But uh, I think the biggest one uh, looking at it is Buzzwool, because Buzzwool hits like a truck. And once it gets a kill, it's already gonna be plus one attack. So it's gonna be up there. It's definitely gonna be a very, very strong and viable Mon uh, on his team, definitely. But he also has some glaring weaknesses in terms of typing. I feel like there's some some types he might have some, he might have some trouble dealing with, um, na uh, namely like fire types. I feel like they're gonna be a big problem. Maybe electric types could be a huge problem for his team as well. Rock types could be a really big problem for his team as well. So I'm 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 curious to see his very trolly team here in action. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts on his team here? Yeah, it's definitely a trolling team for sure. That Cantonian meow pick was very very shocking. Especially when it happened, I felt like, I, I think it's pretty safe to say he could have waited for his last pick to, to take yeah. Cantonian me out. Uh, well, who knows, who knows, but hey, they probably could have waited. Uh, and yeah, Amoongus, even Tentacruel can be a little annoying as well with all of the poison True. stuff, also pretty bulky. I'm excited to see Serena in action, a uh, physical attack and grass type Pokemon. Uh, other than that, pretty weak, so that has to be uh, rather fast because it's generally a slow Pokemon. Walrein, Cramorant, good. They're good. They're you know they can take some hits. Uh, a couple of weaknesses as well. Uh, so you nailed it. Buzzwole is the one that I'm looking at for this team. This is going to be the heavy hitter. This is definitely going to be the MVP of the team week in and week out. Should Ace Ray pull out some victories, uh, it's definitely going to come down to Buzzwole uh, again and, and has some weaknesses as well. So this is definitely going to be a trolly team. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're going to troll you and then they're going to hit you hard. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like this is going to be a team that's just going to annoy the opponent. Mm -hmm. To, to losses <laughs> like it's just gonna frustrate the opponent make them make mistakes because it's so, they're so frustrated um and then he's gonna win through that i just i don't i don't necessarily see this team really like breaking another team you know right. I, I don't see this as like a powerhouse team i see this more as a trolley team that's that could uh frustrate the opponent and cause some mistakes um and then he'll he'll break through on those so i'm very interested to see his team in action um and how he manages to put everyone together um but with that being said that was the final member of the dynamax division the final member of the elite battle league that we are going over today uh and to wrap up we are going to be predicting these the week one matchups for the elite battle league and again i'm gonna throw it to you for this first matchup uh, we have the la inferno versus the everglade Entei. so uh let me know what, what are you thinking over there with this matchup uh, it's definitely going to be an, an interesting matchup for sure. Um, we got the new guy versus uh, a seasoned veteran. Oh, that that'll happen for a couple of these <laughs> these matchups here yeah. today. Uh, yeah, like I said, Foose's team. We just don't know what's going to come to the table. Uh, is it going to be a, a potential drought team, or is he going to bring out his Gastrodons and Venusaur and try to just have just a bunch of Pokemon? So like, it's going to be interesting to see his strategy. Your team as well, like. I, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, I'm talking to you right now, so that's you know a little <laughs> bit easier said than done. But yeah, I, I think you might have the upper edge here. I think you just have more physical attackers. Why, well, um, physical attackers? Excuse me. You just have more attackers in general. So I think you're gonna keep on pounding. You're gonna keep keep throwing those punches, and the more punches you hit, the easier it is to knock out your opponent. So, not. Uh, do you want me to make a prediction, or do you want me to just? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You know what? I you know it's, since, since we're here, I'm gonna pick you to take down Foos. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I this we've been saying it. This is this is one of the toughest matchups I could have gotten, um, first round, and uh, it's it's definitely gonna be a battle. I can tell you guys that much. I know that sounds dumb, but it's definitely gonna be a a hard fought battle. Um, I don't. I don't really see either of us sweeping the other one. Like I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see it being a, a blowout or any, anything mm. remotely close to that. I could definitely see this match going pretty close. Um, I'm gonna back myself. Obviously, yeah. I want to win, so I'm gonna back myself. But um, from a from a neutral perspective, from an outside perspective, I would not be surprised uh, if either team won. I really wouldn't. Um, I think if if I come out with a win, I think it'll be a little bit more surprising because you know, new guy, whatever um because of the original six uh, but <laughs> i definitely i definitely think this match is going to be a toss-up like it, it's just going to be so back and forth um if 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 
a team comes out on top by a wide margin, it's going to be because of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that's like the only way that this match gets out of hand is through mistakes. Other than that, I definitely think it's going to be very, very close. And thank you for picking me. <laughs> hey, you're welcome, buddy. <laughs> uh, now, moving on to the second matchup, we have the Kentucky Kinglers versus the New Brunswick nine tails the cage lock rivals going at it in week one probably one of my probably my most anticipated matchup here in week one um because because of their the history with the cage lock obviously uh the way that ended was not pretty for derek uh he got swept mm. by jack so i'm gonna be very interested to see uh if derek can get his revenge but i mean on paper man uh, derek's team is just powerful um it's very much the sword versus the shield right here um, because like we've been saying, Jack's team is very bulky. However, Derek's team is very strong. I mean, very strong. So it's it's gonna be a big, like, it's just gonna be a, a big strategic match. I feel like on how they manage to get around each other's teams is Jack has to try to avoid taking as many hits as possible while Derek has to hit as many times as possible. So uh, I, I'm personally backing Derek on this one because I just, I just have to just looking at his team right away i mean cinderace mimikyu I mean, we've been saying it dialga you know these heavy heavy hitters um on paper i like i have to back this team with without seeing any of the matches yet um i have to back derek on this one just because of how powerful this team is um what are you thinking with this matchup yeah i'm with you and you just said it right there at the end on paper gotta go with derek and not knowing jack's battle style i think that is, is a huge factor in picking this uh game i'm going with the kentucky kinglers as well i mean i said when we went over their team that i expect them to, to be there in the end in, in the semifinals or even the championship this is such a great team i will say it, it, it could be interesting to see i at both derek and jack are a little uh i don't want to say Hot headed, but they're a little very quick tempered. So, with Jack's team being defensive and a little bit more set up and trolly, it might get to Derek's head. Derek might make a key mistake or two uh, that might get Jack the win, or maybe it's a closer match. But right now, Derek has the power. I'm going with the Kentucky Kinglers. Same here, same here. Uh, by the way, we're giving up. I, I gave up doing score predictions like halfway through last season. It's just never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now moving on to the Iowa and Cinema versus the Atlanta Braviary, a matchup that got a lot more heated recently because of some trash talk that's been going on. Uh, so this is definitely one we need to keep an eye um, for. Uh, we get to see the, the super uber attacking Atlanta Braviary in action. Uh, the runner ups from last season, I, I neglected to mention that they were the runner ups last season. Um, they did make it to the championship, so they're going to be trying to get back there this season. Um, very much very much an attacking team going against Landon's very balanced team. But again, I just, I'm just i not sure what the strategy is with Landon's team. Um, one of the main things he keeps talking about is Polyrath with its rest talk. Um, but I don't really see Polyrath making an appearance in this one. I feel like it just won't do too much against, against uh, Stone's team. Um, I definitely could see Vanillux. I uh, could see Quagsire because, again, we, you mentioned it, the ground types. Uh, so I definitely could see those come in to try and counter it. Maybe a Scizor uh, to also help counter certain things. Uh, and Cinnabar is probably going to make an appearance every match. So that's <laughs> I feel like that's a guarantee. Um, but just because I don't really know the strategy right now, I can't really see what exactly he's going to be running with. Um, I'm, I'm going to hand it to Matt. I feel like the power might be a little bit too much this week. Um, but at the same time, I think Landon's gonna gonna do. I, I think it's gonna be very interesting to see him in, in this matchup because Landon is not a huge competitive battler, uh, but he's you know he turned it around and wanted to battle this season. So I think he'll come up big in this in this first week. Um, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna give it to Landon. Screw it. I'm gonna give it to Landon. Why not? Uh, we'll, we'll give it to the new guy. Um, and I, I think I think the I think this match is gonna be like just close. Uh, and a lot of it's going to come down to whether Landon can shut down a lot of those offensive mons that Matt has. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to give it to Landon. I feel like he's going to surprise us in week one. Uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. And as I mentioned, going over his team, I know uh, a little secret that he told me about a little bit of his strategy and what to expect. 
uh, when we watch the battle ne- next week or, or um, whenever it comes out. I think. Yeah. What? Well, anyways, Saturday. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know the secret. I know. I know his strategy already. So I'm picking Landon. I'm picking the Iowa and Cinnamon, and uh, can't wait to recap it to see uh, if that worked or if Matty Ice knew it was coming and, and he prevailed with his attackers. Definitely, definitely. I'm excited to see too, because uh, apparently he's got this secret. Uh, so many s's apparently he's got this secret strategy you keep bringing up so uh i'm also curious i wonder if he's going to be able to take down matt through this uh strategy but yeah i'm, I'm handing it to landon um i guess this secret strategy works so <laughs> definitely gonna keep an eye on that one uh now moving on we have the detroit luxuries versus the miami dragon Knights, the reigning champs first match in his title defense uh we'll be seeing a very powerful side go against uh another pretty powerful side to be honest both teams have both sides have pretty powerful teams uh the luxuries i feel like are slightly less powerful than the dragonites but honestly there's still quite a bit of power on both sides um i could definitely definitely see whimsicott potentially actually more so zassian uh because zassian can hard counter uh flygon and zygarde that's a gimme it can also i believe it should be able to counter the stack attack as well so uh, like Zassian does really well against the majority of of Max's team, um, and because of that alone, I feel like Zassian will be able to do a lot of damage. And um, because of that, I'm gonna hand it to hand it to Miami, um, and I think they take a win in Week One to start off their title defense right. Um, and I think a lot of it's gonna rest on Zassian's shoulders to carry a lot of the attacking weight. Um, what do you think with this matchup? Yeah, uh, and and uh, we're going, we're staying on the same side. I'm going with Miami Dragon Knights and our friend Guanaco. I just think to defend his title, you got to win this game for sure. I do think Max is going to put up a good fight. I think that Detroit Lux Rays, they're going to keep this close. This is going to be uh, probably my most excited matchup to see in week one. I think this is going to be a very, very close matchup. I think it's going to come down to the wire. I just think Guanaco and the Miami Dragon Knights have that little extra oomph needed not only in their roster but in their strategy as well so um but by no means the detroit luxury is losing this it's not going to be a downer it's it's you know it, uh, of course you're taking the loss but you're going to be right there you're going to bounce back strong so i'm going with miami drag nice in this one all right cool we agree on all of them so far <laughs> uh now with the final matchup for week one we had the philadelphia flygons versus the redwood meows uh i Again, I'm not sure about Ace's team, uh, about how well it'll be able to match up to a lot of the other teams in the league and more so Lone Wolf's team uh, because, again, like we said, it's incredibly balanced. It's just got a lot of balance across the board. Um, Rhyperior and Darmanitan could do a lot of damage against Ace's team. Um, Decidueye uh, can help with the Buzz Wool. Drapion can help with the Buzz Wool if he decides to use it. Blissey, maybe not so much. I feel like Blissey will probably go down pretty quick if it has to match up against the Buzzwool. Um, but I feel like that's the key. Darmanitan, Rhyperior can um, can help a lot with just the team as a whole. Uh, but Darmanitan and Decidueye, I feel like, are going to be the big ones to help try and deal with Buzzwool. My low tick as well could potentially help. Uh, Celesteela, definitely. Xerneas. Like, there's a lot of Pokemon that could counter that Buzzwool. And I feel like once that goes down, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But at, on the flip side, Ace is going to do a lot of things to disrupt that. So if we see Darmanitan come out, could see it get immediately put to sleep. So it's, I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of trickery here from Ace's team to try and disrupt anything Lone Wolf is going to try and do. Um, but I think like if Lone Wolf is able to hit, it's, it's going to be, they're going to be big hits. They're going to be really big hits. And I feel like it's going to be enough to push him. I'm, I'm taking the Philadelphia Flygons for this one. Uh, what you got for this matchup? Yeah, we are we are riding on the Titanic together, my friend. We will see if we <laughs> will uh, sink together or if we survive together. I'm also going with the Philadelphia Flygons in this one. The Redwood Meowths. I mean, he took a Cantonian Meowth as one of his Pokemon. Like, come on, dude. Uh, so I am going with the Philadelphia Flygons. You said everything that, that uh, convinced me to make this pick. And then uh, just choosing that Cantonian Meowth. I'm not going to pick him to win until I see it in action and see see exactly how it will be used. So I'm going with the Philadelphia Flygons as well. That's a fair assessment. I feel like you guys should definitely take these with a grain of salt because we haven't seen any of these teams in action. And we're, uh, so. I'm a big dumb idiot when it comes to competitive Pokemon, <laughs> so I don't know really anything. 
So am I, and I'm in the league. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just take everything with a grain of salt because we haven't seen your guys' strategies or anything like that yet, obviously. So, um, but that's gonna be it for our week one matchups uh, predictions, and that's gonna be it for our preseason roundup. Uh, next week we'll be back with our week one roundup. We'll be in full swing. Uh, you guys will get to see the gameplay layout. We'll, we just have been on the our, our face cam layout here. Um, but the the full gameplay layout will be you guys will see that debut uh, next week I'm super pumped super 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 pumped to get into these week one matchups um, Very excited to watch them and also participate in it. I guess um, So it's gonna be very interesting this Saturday October 2nd is when all the matches are going to be up all five matches um, Well, actually it'll be ten ten videos five matches um, go check out everyone's channel in the description to make sure that you don't miss a single match because trust me You do not want to miss a single match last season every single match just was amazing So you guys definitely want to go watch every single match um, Preferably preferably from both perspectives, but uh, if you don't have time for that, that's okay Just make sure you get eyes on all those matches um, at the very least check out all the coaches Of course subscribe to their channels show a lot of support around the league um and all that good stuff and i have been your co-host i mean your, well one of your co-hosts i guess a lonely hermit uh my links of course will be down below on all that good stuff um and of course i'm joined i've been joined by our lovely new co-host it's really timmy b um his links all his stuff down below of course alongside all the other coaches like i mentioned uh any final words here my co-host nope just want to say well okay yes i do have i i, I get in the habit of saying <laughs> no i don't have any final words and then i say stuff so uh yes i do i uh, just want to wish best of luck to everybody here in the ebl and uh viewers when you guys are watching this enjoy it support all of us Hit that thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to our channels, enjoy some battling, and also put it in the comments, your predictions as well. And uh, we're excited for the season two to be starting soon. And uh, yeah, those are my final words. <laughs> Wonderful final words from Timmy B. And uh, that's it for this one, guys. October 2nd, Saturday, 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 October 2nd. I'm going to drill it into all of your heads October 2nd. All the matches are kicking off. So we hope to see you there and hope you all have a fantastic day. Uh, we'll see you guys next week with the week one roundup. Bye.